Hello! Welcome to my final project. Um, today I will be explaining my three panel painting. Um, and it was really a joy to make, so thank you for the wonderful opportunity. So before I go into describing each panel by itself, I'll just go over some of the main ideas I had um, and what I really wanted to convey with this project. So the point, the point to doing this is to capture what I learned over the course this past semester in the class and what I would want to be able to tell to others and just translating that into a visual art style. So I hope I was able to do Kierkegaard justice in, even with my mediocre skills. <laughs> so um, um, to be a little bit more specific, the main ideas that really intrigued me throughout reading his works were the concepts of despair and anxiety and alleviation of those things and how that happens. And then this whole kind of concept of three different planes of living, the aesthetic, the ethical, and the absurd or religious planes, and how people exist within those. And, um, yeah, uh, that is pretty much it. Oh, and, of course, <laughs> um, the last panel, or the most bright panel, um, I really wanted it to signify the leap of faith, and that's another thing that I just thought was written so well, um, yeah, especially in Fear and Trembling, which was my favorite book. So without further ado, I will explain each individual panel. Hopefully I can zoom in a little. My setup is very rudimentary because my phone was not functioning, so I apologize for that. Let's see here. So the first panel is the darkest color scheme. Um, it is... A uh, very subdued grayish blue with a little bit more um, pops of color in it. And why did I work in this color scheme for the first panel? Well, the blue I felt like really invoked the feeling of a life lived through recollection. I wanted it to kind of mirror A's life and maybe if we were seeing things, you know, in a really stylistic way through A's eyes, it would be, I mean, in my imagination, it was all very subdued, like monochromatic blue colors. And maybe not to signify sadness, but definitely when you get toward the end of your rope on this plane of living, you see it things a lot more darkly, which A definitely experienced. Now, I want to talk about the figures in the painting. They are... The shading is iffy. I am so sorry. And the, the reason why I painted these ladies in this color scheme is partly because of the message I wanted to convey and partly because these uh, bl uh, black and white were very easy for me to blend to get a really soft color gradient, which I wanted. So... I wanted the the viewer to look at these two ladies and and really think that they were two different people. But actually, when you take a closer look, the hair is the same, and the skin is the same, and the shoulders are the same. And this is actually a person considering and contemplating and recollecting and focusing on themselves. And and when I was contemplating. A's life as Kierkegaard wrote it, he did interact with other people, he had relationships, he had Cordelia, he wanted to experience those sublime feelings, but not in and of themselves, not for the right reason, he was doing everything for the sake of his own recollection to kind of spin things into his monochromatic blue tapestry, and this is what is occurring in the first panel really. You encounter the world and other beings, but you do it in a way that is not the best way to relate to others. As we did see um, in either or, it created a lot of heartbreak and whatnot. But before I move on, I will explain the purpose of the pattern that moves throughout these panels. I don't know whether I want to say that they represent reality or the movement of time, but I do know that they I, I used them as a storytelling device to create fluidity between the panels. So I would like to draw your attention to them. 
Um, as we move into the second panel here, the dots gain a second dimension of color. You get this really cool interplay between yellow and blue, makes this green right here. Kind of, and I really enjoyed that because the second panel, and I'll try and zoom in on the second panel, is supposed to signify really a movement from the aesthetic to the ethical, and just the despair actually between both levels. And that is why the dots in the first two panels are still predominantly black, but but take on other dimensions. So. I wanted to capture here what it's like to move from one plane to another, otherwise known as feeling that despair and then reaching out. So I drew, or I painted these hands, and I wanted to evoke a sense of Michelangelo's um, painting on the Sistine Chapel, um, God and Adam. I know the hand postures are not correct, but it just really struck me and really... Uh, kind of vibed, in my opinion, with what Kierkegaard was trying to say in a lot of his works, when you can see on, his, on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, Adam is very lackadaisically reaching toward God, and God has a lot more attention in his whole posture. I wanted to capture that here, and how we can come to such a dark place in our lives, whether it's between the aesthetic and the ethical, or the ethical and the absurd, to where we cannot save ourselves. Death might be better, but then death would be a commitment, as we recall. But yet we still hesitate to reach for something greater than that. And so this, yeah, the orange I wanted to represent kind of the ethical moving into the lighter yellow orange of the absurd. And this is what's being offered to this person represented by the darker blue panels. And the interaction is fierce between them. And I was really happy with how this turned out. But, yeah, I, I, think, that, I think that about sums it up for this panel. It's probably one of my favorite panels. But I will move on. Um... We get panel three, which is what I wanted. I wanted to convey, I wanted to make sure to, to describe what it's like when you choose the absurd, when you choose faith, when you choose to live in that upholding of the ethical yet not be doomed by the ethical, which is a with God life. What are you feeling? That ecstasy and elation. But how do you paint it? For me, it can only be some type of explosion. And and the, the dots that represent time, that represent reality, they are still real. They are still they still have their character, but they're brought to their purpose, really. And when we were learning about um in, in the far beginning, learning about conceptions of heaven and how it's really it, it will be a temporal experience. I wanted to capture that with these dots here. They, they, they still are the line of time, but they have no end and have many more aspects of reality than we could ever hope to imagine when we choose to live with God. And so, yeah, thinking about if there's anything else I'd like to say about this. I do. I, there is something else I'd like to say. Again, notice how the dots cease to be black, but there are still there's still that really nice subdued blue color in here. And I was thinking about how uh, one concept that I had trouble with was Kierkegaard's whole thing that we have to make this choice not in order to be absorbed by something greater than than ourselves, which was Kierkegaard was Kierkegaard was very concerned about that, and he wanted to make it clear that when you choose that with God's life, it's about being infinitely interested in something God, and that thing being infinitely interested in you. You do it for yourself. You don't get lost in you know. <laughs> Gaia or whatever you want to call it but so the blue of this individual the blue in all of us gets taken up into something better but it's still itself it's still blue still a beautiful shade we still have memories 
from that time, but but we're able to escape the despair that's present in this panel, the kind of ethical despair that we will never measure up. And hopefully the celebration of colors in this panel, in this last panel, represents one does what one can, which is another thing that's head knowledge right now, but maybe not heart knowledge. And hopefully I can do some nice supplemental reading this summer and, and really come to understand it more. But I'll zoom out one more time so we can look at them all together. And that is about it for my final exam. Again, thank you so much for having this class this year. It was so much fun, and I think I would definitely take it again. Um, yeah, I had a ton of fun painting this, and <laughs> I hope you have a really good summer. Okay, thank you.